Greetings AP Calc AB students, Mr. Record here, going to take a look at our examples three and four. From topic 6.9, we're still learning about integrating with u substitution, but now we're going to do some u subbing with trig. So let's take a look at these problems that involve trigonometric functions and see where they take us. It says we can perform integration by substitution for more complex integration. Uh, trig functions as well. So as you see in example three, part A, we're going to integrate the sine of 2x. Well, previously we just integrated sine of x, and that was just a matter of memorizing a formula. To integrate the sine of 2x, we got to use this substitution idea. And we still use that same idea that our u is going to typically be a value that's located within parentheses. Well, one can argue there is no parentheses in the sine of 2x, but maybe if you think about it, there really are some invisible parentheses around that 2x, and thus that would be our u. As we typically do, we'll take the derivative of that on both sides, and then we swing that differential dx over to the right. Now, at this point, we notice that our du and our dx aren't interchangeable. They're not equal to each other outright. They have this factor of 2 that is getting in the way. So as we did before, you could solve for dx and see that dx is du divided by 2, at which point you could see that this integration can be rewritten as the sine of u, where the 2x is replaced, and then this dx becomes du over 2, which basically means that you're just going to pull a one-half out to the very front of the integration. Now, some of you might be getting a little bit more in tune to this, and at this step right here where I've got the star, you might notice that whatever constant shows up unneeded there, in other words, something that you really didn't care to get, if you just flip it upside down and put it in front of your rewrite, it's always going to work. And then to finish this off, the antiderivative of sine is negative cosine. So we have the negative that floats out to the front with the 1 half. And then we put u here plus c. But we could go ahead and just back substitute our u and change it to 2x and then add our c. And that would be our final answer. It's not 100% imperative that you write your 2x within parentheses. I will tell you it looks better, but it's not something that's mandatory. Let's take a look at part B. In this particular case, we're going to let u equal theta divided by 4. Now, we're using a little bit of a different variable, theta. That might throw some people off, but let's go ahead and proceed with our derivative here. When you take the derivative of theta over 4, you can just think of this as really 1 fourth times theta, right? And you're taking this derivative with respect to theta, and so you're just going to get 1 fourth, right? Constant times the variable, the derivative is the constant. But this du over d theta that we would have had here will multiply over to the other side, and then we have 1 fourth d theta. Now, as you can probably guess, if we want to get the d theta by itself, we're going to multiply both sides by 4. And once d theta is alone, he can get substituted out for 4 du, which means that 4 is just going to go to the front. So it's just like taking this 1 fourth and flipping it upside down. Except, let me think about that. If you take 1 fourth and you flip it upside down, isn't that an h? Oh, well, whatever. We'll get that out of the way there. Get out of the way. <laughs> so what we're going to do here is cover this up and get this out of the picture. And let's finish up this problem. So what's going to happen is we're going to rewrite this integration. We'll write it in blue here. And we have 4 that we know is going to come out in front. And then this cosecant squared is going to act upon u with respect to u. Now at this stage, you'd have to understand what is the integration of cosecant squared. It's not something that you have to develop. It's not something that you have to painstakingly calculate. It's something that you just very simply 
have to memorize. And the integration of cosecant squared is negative cotangent. And that would be of our u, except I'm going to go ahead and back substitute the u, which was theta over 4, and then we have our plus c. And here we go. This is our final answer. I'm going to move this over a little bit so that I can circle it. All right. Now, if we take a look at our final example, number four is sort of separate here because it kind of invokes a little bit of a different feel, a little bit different vibe going on with this. So let me kind of talk you through the progression here. In example four, you're going to have to do a U substitution. And I always ask students, what do you think U is going to equal? And oftentimes, their first thought was 3x. Now, anything that I write in orange, I'm going to caution you, just watch. You don't want to write this stuff in orange. If we let u equal 3 times x, what that's going to say is the derivative is 3. Okay, no big deal. I, I get that. But by the time you start to assemble this, sine squared of u sticks around times the cosine of u, and then this dx, I guess, is just a du over 3, and we've got a big problem on our hands. We're not going to be able to integrate sine squared times cosine, not without doing another u substitution, and we probably should have just done the correct one to begin with. We just don't have an integration formula that handles this sine squared times cosine. Right? At this point, you only know the integration of six different trigonometric expressions. So we have to just go back to the drawing board and try out a different u, at which point many times students will go, well, how about cosine of 3x? Well, I think we're on the right track. If we take that derivative, we end up with negative sine of 3x times 3. See the chain rule at work there? But now the problem is, is if we rewrite this integral, we end up with something that is going to be a problem. I don't even know how to write it. And the reason is because this derivative contains one power of sine 3x, and our integrand has two powers. And there's no way that we can match those. We just don't have the right exponents. Even if we let this be a u, we're stuck. So that's not going to work. At which point, students might say, well, what about u equals sine squared? After all, it seems like it's the only thing that we haven't tried yet. Well, when you take this derivative, first of all, it's a pain in the rear end because it's a double chain rule. The 2 comes out in front, sine to the first power of 3x. Now you have to multiply by the derivative of sine of 3x, which is cosine of 3x times 3. Wow, that's a lot. Well, guess up guess what? <laughs> we just used up this entire expression for our u, so there's no way that this can match that. Now, it might seem like we're out of options, but we're not. There's one thing that we haven't yet let u equal as of yet, and this is where you might want to join in on the problem because this is correct. u is going to be sine of 3x to the first power. That derivative is going to be nice. It's going to give you 3 times the cosine of 3x. See the chain rule there? And I'll swing the dx over. So we have this perfect match of cosine that 3x times dx. We just don't have a match for our 3, but we could easily remedy that by flipping the 3 upside down, putting it out in front of our integral. And remember, you let u be one power of sine. So your u is just two powers of u, u squared. And then we put our dis with respect to u. And then when we integrate this, we have 1 third times u to the third over 3 plus c. And if we back substitute 1 ninth, and then I'll rewrite my u as the sine of 3x. And I'll put that cubed probably in that little spot there. And there's our final answer. Now, I don't know what your attitude is about after seeing example four. Sometimes it could be frustrating. But you have to kind of keep in mind that what we're doing here is we're using a technique 
called Guess and Check. It's something that you've used quite a bit in your background with, with mathematics in general, and there's nothing wrong with it. It's a perfectly viable means by which to find these particular answers. If you think back to the days when um, you were doing things like um, things like this, 12x squared uh, minus 36x plus 15 factor. Right? It's very likely that you had to guess and check and try lots of different combinations of things that you might be able to use to 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 make your 12x squared at the front of these binomials and then a couple of things that might make that 15 and then hope that the middle terms would equate to negative 36 and that's okay you might have tried things they didn't work so you tried something else i think that u substitution with integration is very similar to that i have found myself many times especially with more advanced integration problems say in the bc course choose the wrong u I don't get upset. I just say, oh, that didn't work. So I try something else. So keep an open mind as you're working through some U substitution problems and understand that you may not always choose the, the correct U to begin with, but just stick with it. Lots more videos coming up with U substitution to make you better and better at this all-important technique. So please stick around for them. And as always, thank you for joining.